Hey, it's Mark. Let's look at Tesla. Seems like a lot of you are interested in Tesla. My my Tesla video that I did had a lot of views, probably one of my highest videos recently as far as views go. So actually my fundamental analysis one had, had the most views. I had 55 views on that one on YouTube. But I think the technicals are really painting the picture here even more for Tesla. So let's just look at the, the chart here. So I like to look at the history of, a, of the stock before uh, I look at the recent history. So as I said in the other video, it likes to trade in these long down channels, at least recently. So, so it was in a down channel all of 2022, really. So I wouldn't be surprised if this down channel continues because it has shown that it can it can be in a downtrend for you know a year over a year so i really wouldn't be surprised if this down channel continues to go another couple months or a few months at least so so that's the way i've kind of looked through look at the chart is through this down channel here and i just found that their last earnings report back in october the stock actually got down off of that because so we just had this big gap down. If you haven't followed the news, Tesla had a pretty bad earnings call and the stock sold off and even the Tesla bulls, the, the hardcore Tesla bulls are kind of bearish on the stock now or not bearish, but they're, they weren't happy. In other words, they just weren't happy. So we had a big, big gap down today and it, and it even went down even more after the gap down. Like I was expecting it to gap down this much and then kind of come back up to kind of get back in that channel, but it's just been so um, so weak here. And so we look at the last earnings report, which you can see between these two blue lines here. It had an earnings report back in October and the stock gapped down almost a similar similar percentage move too, it looks like, and gapped down, finished red, continued to sell. And it gapped down again and then it went down again and that's where it finally found support um after the after the second day of the gap of going down after the gap down so so that tells me that these gap downs they can they can continue to to go down after the gap downs so and a lot of times that's sort of what a gap down means is that there's a there's obviously a huge pressure on the stock to go down so it gapped down it gaps down you know overnight which a lot of times stocks don't do that a lot and uh so that kind of gives us an idea of what it might do i'm not saying it's going to go down the next two days but it's done that in the past and i'd say the last quarter wasn't that great either so they i can't really tell if people are less happy <laughs> With uh, this quarter versus last quarter, because I'm not really, I'm not, I don't follow Tesla that closely, um, at least until recently. But since I found these setups here, but you know, we'll see what it does. You know, I think there's still a lot of room to go down, so I think it's probably more likely just to keep going down from here. Um, and it's still got a long way to go until it gets to the bottom of that channel. So this down channel here, this red line. This red line here, this that's the, the support down channel, and it's definitely what what it's working with right now. So it could easily come down to one seventy a share, or even um, looks like high one sixties. Uh, like a lot of people, they just look at the levels, you know, going back. I mean, levels matter too, but. When a stock trades in these down channels so consistently, that's, that's the only thing I really care about. So, like, you can find a level here. I mean, it's got, it's got a level at, like, 150, actually. So, that doesn't really help the, the bull case. Um, so, I think it's going to at least come down to this down channel. And uh, it may take, you know, a few days or a couple of days, or it may take you know, weeks or it may not even go. I mean, it doesn't even have to go down there, but 
it looks like I think the selling pressure is going to continue for a while. And uh, I, could, I could be totally wrong. Like, you know, it's just, um, it's just what the chart score tells us, you know, trying to read what the institutions like to do after earnings and what they're doing right now. And the sentiment on EVs is kind of slowed down. It's like, it's not like it was, you know, in 2020, 2021. So the whole sector has been kind of, you know, getting, getting hammered. So, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we go down to that 160 something. So that's kind of my, that's my prediction, you know, um, I, I made a good call on another video on technicals on this channel here. Like it looked like, you know, the down channel is going to hold, you know, unless there was some kind of blowout big, big earnings quarter, but they announced, they announced the Roadster. They're like, they have a new model coming out. Um, they hope by like 2025 and it's a new, as far as I know, it's smaller. Like I didn't really look into all the details on it, but it's going to be another competitive car, you know, price point wise, you know, for, with everything. So they put that out right the day before the uh, earnings announcement, which, you know, in hindsight, that was, that was kind of, um, maybe a tell there with, they put it out before, right before their earnings because they knew it was bad, but, you know, like, uh, but the thing about gap zones like these is, you know, if, if institutions change their minds and, or something, there's like a switch, you know, they can easily, easily be, um, like pipe bottoms where it could just go up from here, but we'll see, like, I think, I think we're, I think this down channel is going to hold for at least another, at least to the end of the month, at least. So we'll see, it might even take out the lows from in the channel, you know. But we'll see. So that's just kind of what I what what my thoughts are after the earnings here. And uh, the sentiment still, the reaction to the earnings was negative. So that kind of tells us what the likelihood of of the stocks moving going forward is going to be, unless it just totally goes green tomorrow and just takes out you know one um one nineties. You know if it goes into the like one ninety four or one ninety five tomorrow then you know, all this, this doesn't matter. And who knows where it's going to go. Like, but if we keep going down, if it goes down tomorrow and um, it's red tomorrow, then I think the likelihood that it's going to follow through to that channel support um, is, is good. So, so that's just, those are just my thoughts. You know, it's not, um, not advice or anything, or you not know, a lot of people are, a lot, a lot of people invest in Tesla and, um, and as you can see in my other video where I talked about the fundamentals, it's not really, it's not the best company to me to invest in um, for the long term. Um, you know, the, the, there's good trades you know you can make in it, but the the just just because the nature of the car business is really tough. You know, like a lot of car companies struggle. Even the best ones struggled, you know, over the years, like especially American ones like, you know, GM, Ford, you know, they're doing well now, but, you know, decades ago, they, um, like, uh, GM went bankrupt as far as I, as my memory is right, the, even the best car companies can go bankrupt just because of the nature of the business. It's like really, um, it's very, uh, year to year, you know, the product, the product has to change. So, well, that's just my thoughts and um so i think this channel is going to hold and uh that's all i've got to say on that so uh thanks for stopping by and be sure and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications you know check out my videos i put a lot of pertinent analysis out there when i see things that are that are really obvious and i do i do really long videos where I go into detail about the charts pattern chart patterns and everything and I just did a video on uh, a deep value stock like a more you know investing investing kind of approach so I do investing and trading and if you're into the investing then uh, I recommend uh, subscribing to my Substack 
and that's in my link tree and my my handle is all the same on all like stock pursuits my handle on youtube and and twitter x and my Substack is a uh, stock pursuit i actually got some more followers on the Substack, so that was cool like my my pick my most recent Substack pick um i did a report on is uh doing really well and it's up it's up uh, like 85 percent from where i alerted it so that's my Substack right here and uh it's my handles at, at stock pursuit so it's Substack stock pursuit and my last one was impp and you can tell i'm not i'm not i'm not biased against evs because i actually I thought this EV company was a good value, this um, AYR, AYRO, a um, long time ago. And that was actually kind of a dud, but you, know, you can't, can't win them all. But, you know, I do, I do find a lot of the best deep value stocks. And I've done that for a long time. Like I used to have the, one of the best uh, blogs on the internet for deep value stocks for net, net nets and net tangible asset value. This was back in like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, or actually even longer than that, like 15 years ago. <laughs> but I had to shut it down for, because I had a job at a financial company and I was actually like a financial advisor. So they kind of don't like you putting stuff out on the internet, at least the, the SEC and FINRA. FINRA, you know, they, 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 they didn't like me to market, to do marketing, even though I was in sales. So, you know, like. Or else, trying to get clients. So, you know, that's just, that's the, that's the nature of the financial regulation, I guess. But so check out my Substack if you haven't, and subscribe because I I don't do a lot of, I don't do a lot of these. I just whenever, if I find something good, I put it out there, and uh, I don't do one every month or anything. Cause if there's not a good stock, I don't put one out there. And it's, it's, when I see them, I put them out there. So if there's something good, I put it out. If it's not, I don't. So. Um, the SLGC is another one that's, that's, uh, interesting. It was like really cheap, but like less than cash, I think. And, uh, yeah, I find a lot of good ones. So, but those are more like, uh, you know, deep value. Of course, Tesla's not a deep value stock. It's like a mega, it's like a huge, like a large cap, but, but, uh, yeah, I'll call it a wrap there and, uh. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, thanks for the continued support. And uh, check out my Twitter and all that stuff. So uh, appreciate you. And I'll catch you next time.